All right, welcome back to another episode of Travel Ball Talk. I'm your host, Rich Prado, owner of Playing School. Today we're heading back to the Kansas City area, down to Olathe. Um, wait, did I just mispronounce that? We'll find out. Our guest today is Jeremy Jones from Building Champions. Jeremy, did I did I just totally butcher the name of your hometown? No, you're, you're good. It's Olathe. Uh, Olathe, Kansas. See? It's kind of southwest of Kansas City, downtown. Uh, so. All right. Well, you know what? I'm gonna at least I got your name uh, close. Um, so <laughs> good. Oh, 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 late, oh, late. I probably I'm gonna go. struggle with that. We'll just we'll just stick with uh, the suburbs of Kansas, Kansas City. Yeah, Kansas City. So Pretty this easy is city it, to get around for sure. This is actually by total coincidence the second um, podcast with a team based in your area. So it apparently is, uh, is a hot, hot, hot topic right now in the travel ball world and travel ball talk. Um, so you guys are sitting right there along I 70, um, you know, East major East West corridor across, you know, across, across the, uh, the flatlands, if you will. Um, first of all, I should say building champions, that's the name of your organization. It's one of those that I feel like I've known forever, but I actually am you pretty uh, admittedly kind of unfamiliar as far as like the finer details. So I'm looking forward um, to learning about you, getting to know you, and learning about building champions. Um, can you can you just give us, myself included, this is sort of more um, uh, for me than any anything. Is can you just give us sort of like your personal bio and background and then catch us up to to how and where and why um building champions came to be absolutely first of all have thanks for having us on here today um i was a kid in kansas city that grew up and I played three sports in the in this area and you know we didn't have academy baseball back then uh, i think I, my dad got me some lessons in the off season to kind of prepare me for the you know the cold months the, the to prepare me for the spring season coming up in uh this high school area here but anyway um i played three sports um a success in kind of all three through high school then decided that i was going to go play baseball uh beyond high school because i was drafted by uh, the colorado rockies uh, as a draft and follow out of high school. So I chose the junior college route down in Arizona, more or less just chose the warm weather, had it narrowed down to a couple of junior colleges in Kansas and then, and then Arizona. So I went down to Mesa community college in Arizona, uh, got really good at baseball for the next two years. Cause, cause I got outside, uh, with some really good coaching down there. Uh, Buck Sorelli, uh, who I, I think he just got inducted into the hall of fame, uh, junior college hall of fame, but, um, Zeke Zimmerman down there. And then, uh, I got drafted, after my freshman year by the uh, Indians or now the guardians. Um, but I decided not to do that and ended up uh, going to Arizona state university with Pat Murphy, who's the bench coach for the Milwaukee Brewers. We took second in the country in 1998. Then um, went to the uh, Texas Rangers at, out of uh, Arizona state spent five years in their system as a catcher and uh, really just got, you know, a PhD in baseball uh, coming out of those places in college and spending five years in professional baseball, chasing a dream to get to the big leagues. It was a kind of a high market club at the time. I was a catcher. Yvonne Rodriguez is now a hall of famer, kind of uh, had that mm -hmm. job up in the big leagues. Um, but uh, was around so many great hitters, so many great baseball players, so many great coaches, so many great mentors along the way that basically I made the decision to come home back to Kansas city and, you know, pass on all that information, basically eight years of college professional baseball to Kansas City kids that, you know, I kind of wish I would have had more or less uh, when I was growing up here. So um, that's where the passion started. Um, you know, my, I guess from a childhood perspective, my dad, you know, uh, got me into all sports and was kind of my advocate for everything and uh, my mentor going through as a kid. So I think it all kind of starts with a, a father-son relationship. And um, so – you know, came home, brought it back to Kansas City, uh, was uh, basically started uh, building champions in the kind of December, January frame of 03, 04, and um, was able to kind of grow it from basically ground zero in a kind of a residential barn with a couple people. Uh, so now it's above 600 families, um, and uh, we've kind of gone through a little bit of a change here to get into a larger facility that we'll talk about. Uh, but I want to keep it as short as possible so you can ask some more questions. But 
obviously a many years of experience, um, both on the playing side and the coaching side. We started our uh, teams and building champions in 07. Uh, we've landed uh, numerous kids into college baseball. I think we have over 20 draft picks, and you know, I think seven or eight have made it to the big leagues. A few uh, pitched in the All Star games and the World Series. So it's been a it's been a really fun, blessed blessed run. Uh, just being here in the Kansas City area, and it's been really fun to watch and be a part of all the organizations in Kansas City, including the Kansas City Royals, my uh, employer, as far as uh, scouting goes. To, uh, to just watch Kansas City baseball. Obviously, they won the World Series in 15, went to the World Series in, in 14. Uh, just watching baseball really take off. And, um, you know, we're, it was, it's been really fun to watch because, uh, you know, uh, prior to that, we, we weren't really known for baseball. And it's, it's really changed a lot in the last 20 years. Thank you for that. that was, uh, that's, that's a solid background. And I, I, I want to go – backwards before we go forwards um you got to spend time at the old rosenblatt stadium with your visit to the college world series with pat murphy and asu uh you you, do you have any rosenblatt uh stories for us uh about your experience there it was bittersweet you know i was a part of one of the best teams in college baseball willie bloomquist who's now the coach at arizona state um uh he was on my team and you know andrew byenbrink who's uh, running sports force out there in California. He was on the team as an all American. I just think of uh, when I, oh, think I know of Andrew. State, yeah. When, when I think of my team, uh, in 98 or our team, I just think about the guys that I played with, which is just numerous great people that we stay in contact with. Um, you know, and Pat Murphy leading, leading us. I just think of, think of that, uh, group of people. And of course, again, we didn't, we didn't win at all. And it was fun to be an old Rosenblatt, but, um, you know, it, it was just, it, it's always about people um, at the end of the day and, and the relationships that you build because whether you win the championship or not, you know, you're going to have those friends for life and those people to go to, um, you know, for the rest of your life. So it's been, it was a, it was a, it, old Rosenblatt was really fun, but it was more about just the whole run. Uh, you know, we, we had a decent regular season and got hot at the right time with the right people and made a run at it. So it was really fun. Uh, super cool. Super cool. So, in in all of your ample free time when you're not running uh, building champions and and helping with the facility we'll talk about home field in a second you're also um scouting with the with the royals yeah i just do some local stuff and you know pass on okay. some information to you know jj picola lonnie, Gold, lonnie goldberg um you know obviously with dayton moore when he was here he was with he's with the rangers now but i just passed on information on you know the kids work ethic you know how they were raised I got to know okay. a lot of people in the in the city. Uh, you know, got to know their families. So I was kind of like the the guy for the organization that got to know the kids more personally, uh, other than gotcha. you know, on the five tools of baseball. And gotcha. we would go in these travel events, and I'd pass on a name. Hey, there's this kid from Georgia that I really liked, and just got the information into the organization. So it's been just kind of a part time situation for me. But it, I mean, I've been a you know so called royals family member for a long time now so it's been fun with their run winning the world series and all that stuff and just tr- tremendous people there um it feels more like a family than a you know a baseball organization but they're obviously really good at what they do so my uh my head coach in college Jim Farr uh when I played for him at the college of William and Mary um he's been uh a scout with the royals for a long time now and uh, a couple of the guys that he that you know he he scouted from our area now guys you probably recognize uh Vinny Pasquin uh Vinny Pasquantino and uh Daniel Lynch are yeah. um, two two guys from my backyard I filmed both those boys when they were in high school they probably weren't even 150 pounds a piece when when I filmed them and uh, you know Vinny went on to crush baseballs at ODU and, and Lynch had a really good career at UVA, but, um, but yeah, far, far was the guy that the scout that, uh, that, you know, is in this area that signed both those dudes, um, turned out well for, for, for them. They're, they're good players. Absolutely. Great players and even better people. You know, the, the Royals organization has done a great job of, you know, selecting the right player, not necessarily the greatest players as far as, you know, great people in the community and, They've just been really, really cool people uh, to watch, uh, you know, grow up in the Kansas City Royals organization and finally got them in Kansas City. So 
looking forward to their next steps in, in growing this organization. They got some really good pieces, and I really think they can turn it around soon. Well, I ho- ho- hopefully Coach Farr can, has uh, continued the uh, the Virginia to Kansas City pipeline. He's he was uh, back then his his I would say top, his top thing was just evaluating, not 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 just evaluating current talent, but projecting future talent. That was that was what gave us at a small school any chance to um, to have success. Was he he could project as as good if not better than anybody else i know and so hopefully he's uh continuing that in this current role um scouting with the with the royals um but let's let's move a little bit forward in your journey you talked about i think it was in 0304 is when you were working out of a barn did i hear you say that correctly yeah yeah basically i was um you know i just needed to start my own my own thing so Came up with the name Building Champions. Asked my buddy Sam Scott, who um, he was a childhood friend of mine. He actually played for Florida State um, and, and came out of Cali County uh, Junior College in Kansas. They won a, a national championship, but just a great friend. And um, and I asked his dad, or him and his dad, he had a barn that had a uh, cage in. I said, hey, I need a place to start this thing. Uh, you mind if I pay you some <laughs> some cheap rent until I get enough saved up where I can get my own place? So. I think I had three clients in a residential barn. Um, it was, it's, you know, it's just where I started. I really appreciate the Scott family for allowing me to, you know, start there. But that's that's basically how I started it. I just went, I went love there that and story. started grinding it out one day at a time. And, um, you know, I didn't realize where it was going to go. I just put my head down and kept serving the kids in Kansas City. And, you know, you get one kid, you seem to get, you know, 10 more because they're on the same team and the kids have mm-hmm. success. So. That's kind of how you use your advertising, the success of one player. They spread it around their teams and stuff like that. So, uh, And that was, yeah, that was just blessing. straight lessons at the time. You were doing hitting lessons and pitching lessons and catching lessons yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and being then, a catcher background, you kind of be able to, you know, cross over even in the pitching side of things. And so I was doing pretty much everything at that time. The um, And then it wasn't until a, f- a few years of doing that before you launched your first team. Yeah, 07 was the first uh, team uh, that we had, and that had Trevor Rosenthal on it. Um, ironically, who is it, it had a great what age group? In what, what age group was that team? So they were 16. Uh, Trevor was 16U at uh, in 2007. So okay, um, he he went on to play for many teams, uh, including I think he still has a single season record for the most saves in Cardinals history. Um, but, uh, he pitched in the world series, pitching the all-star game. Uh, what a great kid to follow. I say a kid, he's, <laughs> he's married, sure, has huh? kids and, um, these are, I'm these the are same all kids way. to me. Um, yeah, I do the, but, I do the uh, same thing. I do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but, that's uh, wild. So, it, so how, how did you like, was this a conscious decision for you to launch a 16 U team or did after doing lessons for three or four years, one of the dads was like, Hey, you need to do this like how did how did it come to be well actually kind of a sad story um the the team was training inside my facility which was in belton missouri at the time and um uh, one of the, the the head coach and uh one of the dads on the team passed away from a motorcycle accident so they asked me to take over the team and uh-huh. um you know i was kind of like you know oh, i've never been in that world i don't know how to do it so but basically we, you know, we, we figured it out uh, for those kids and, and started taking them. You know, we, I remember taking them down to Arizona. I remember taking them to Atlanta and um, kind of got them on the map. There were so many great players on that team. Trevor was just kind of the headline guy um, that it may be more of a household name for people to, to understand. But um, it more or less was just kind of a tragedy, and we turned it into the best thing we could possibly do, which take those kids and, and help them through that process and, and that's kind of how it all started. That was the original team. Uh, so that, um, you know, uh, that's how it started. Wow. I, you almost wonder, like, you would have probably eventually have run into um, running your own teams. But doing it in that fashion is unusual. Um, Absolutely. It was a, I mean, it just kind of – it obviously just happened and um and kind of forced into it a little bit because there was no way I was going to say no to those kids and that team 
Of course. Uh, and then it just kind of it kind of just multiplied from there on. I think in 2012 is when we launched our youth teams to kind of be feeders to our high school. Uh, but that was 17 was was started on that premises. Wow. And um, I'm assuming around that time you probably moved out of the barn and yeah. maybe did what a lot of guys are doing. There, you know, you rent you rent some something in an industrial sort of part of town. You throw up some some cages. Um, what did your next place after that barn look and feel like? Yeah, so I was obviously in a residential area, uh, so I wanted to get out of there as soon as possible for the respect of the Scott family, and I think I did within the year. So by, you know, 05, I was out of there in Dalton, and, you know, I, and I moved into the, uh, like what you say, a more, more um, uh, bigger spot and some more uh, space there, a place where I could, you know, start my own uh, business. I borrowed some money from my grandfather and uh, started that the place over there and um, was able to pay him back pretty quickly on that uh, that loan. But, um, yeah, I started over there from 05 to 07. I was in Belton, Missouri, and I was teaching a guy, another household name maybe for some people, Jason Grimsley, who um, who had a place over in Oldham Park, and he was bringing his, his kids over to Belton, Missouri. And he said, I got a nice place for you over on the Kansas side if you ever want to take a look. And, of course, it took some time for me to figure that out. But I eventually moved from the Missouri side to the Kansas side to kind of and get some more opportunities, some more space available to our kids and families. And, um, and then he kind of sold me the, the, the building in 2012. So, you know, from 07 to 2012, Jason moved back to Houston in 2012 and I kind of took over that whole facility. And then from 2012 to, you know, about a year and a half ago, I was in that facility and then home field came calling and acquired the building champions baseball Academy, more or less to kind of give these kids a, a bigger opportunity, even more so in a bigger facility and, and more opportunities on the fields and stuff like that, that I couldn't you know, go out and build eight fields myself and all turf and all that stuff that, that the money requires. So um, just kind of upgrading the facilities all along, you know, from 03 to Belton to over the park, now to Olathe, now, you know, going up by the racetrack and getting the, some more space available for these kids in Kansas City. That's kind of how it's gone. It's a, I think this is just such a, a great lesson for that, for that guy who's getting into it, that you don't have to do everything at once. Obviously, everybody wants the multi-field facility with the 100,000 square foot in, indoor. We get it. We all want that. But it doesn't need to be day one. You can start no. in a barn and then move up the road to a couple cages, then move up the road to a little bit bigger place. And then when the timing's right, you you can do bigger things. So, so uh, it, I should I always mess up and should direct traffic real quick. Um, the website... Uh, for building champions is bc baseball today.com bc baseball today.com and i believe the twitter is the same bc baseball today um so you can catch up uh with uh with coach jones there but when you go to the website what you're going one of the th- first things you're going to see is the connection to something called home field and we've we've sort of alluded to it a sec, uh a, a few minutes ago but um obviously i click through wanted to check out what home field is all about um and it looks unbelievable can you can you tell the listeners a little bit about home field and and, yeah, the, so- and give them and give them the full connection uh i mean you kind of did a, a little bit but give the full connection to uh uh to building champions yeah, you missed, mentioned the organic and genuine uh, way of you know growing the uh, business in general, especially on the baseball, softball side of things. But just taking one little bitty step at a time, and then all of a sudden you wake up after 15, 20 years, and you're like, okay, what's the next step? And, wow, I can't believe that I'm here. Um, basically, Home Field uh, has a couple owners in the city that really care about youth uh, sports in the city. Um, and they basically have these uh, large warehouse buildings and uh, building a new facility up by the racetrack in Kansas City um, and the eight fields that PBR, we'll get into that here in a second, that are uh, running tournaments. But basically they, uh, you know, uh, reached out to me and uh, was wondering if they could acquire me through uh, their facilities to allow our kids to have more opportunities. And uh, it took me some time to figure that out to make sure it was the right move for our people. And I went ahead and did it because it for sure is. We're going in the right direction for more opportunity for our people. So um, 
home field is uh, our main place is in Olathe, Kansas. You might have seen that uh, in a uh, Netflix show called The Quarterback. Uh, Patrick Mahomes worked out here in the off season last year, uh, three days a week. But um, and so it's a really nice place to work out for any professional or amateur kid. And we have uh, you know, there's basketball in there, there's soccer in there, there's obviously a lot of space for baseball and softball. There's a speed, strength, and agility uh, big big facility for that for the kids. Down the street, they have acquired uh, Billion Champions, um, uh, basically volleyball and lacrosse and in uh, basketball. They have all kinds of different uh, sports. Billion Champions was kind of a universal name I came up with in the first place, so it just so happened to work out that it would go across different sports and stuff like that. So it ended up working out. But, um, yeah, that's basically it, trying to acquire some more indoor space. We live in Kansas City, so we have to hibernate for about four months out of the year at least, although it's November is being nice to us right now, um, but uh, we have to go inside and then that obviously having the eight fields to take our kids out there and, and practice and develop those kids. So it's been really really nice. Yeah, for for reference, when he says uh, big uh, warehouses, uh, one of the locations according to the website uh, is a hundred thousand square feet, uh, and the other location is two hundred and seventy thousand square feet so big doesn't quite tell the whole story that's enormous um you were talking about um um patrick mahomes who you know for you swifties out there that's that's the guy who plays he's the guy that throws the ball on the team with the guy who's dating taylor swift okay <laughs> now we get that right so that's the easiest way to describe who he is um or the best so, yeah, that too. Um, yeah, that too. He's pretty pretty athletic, um, and, and former ball player. Did, wait, time out. Um, he yeah he he was a was he a pitcher? Was he a two way guy in high school? Yeah. I can't remember. I, actually, his dad was with the Texas Rangers when I was with them, so I was catching some bullpens. I, I don't remember him specifically, but I was catching probably him and some bullpens when I was just a. You know, no, it's hilarious. Little run down in the minor league, minor league side, and Yvonne Rodriguez wouldn't catch too many uh, bullpens in <laughs> spring training. Yeah. So us minor leaders got a bunch of work in with that stuff. But uh, his dad made, had a long career as a pitcher in the big leagues and was with the Texas Rangers at the time. And, and um, yeah, Patrick played, uh, was a great, you know, a multi-sport kid. And his trainer would tell a lot of stories. Bobby Stroop here that works out a lot of some kids here, and obviously his personal trainer um, and Bobby Witt Jr. as well. Bobby uh, Stroop is one of the most um, you know famous uh, w- workout personal trainers there is out there. So, um, but um, started APEC down in Texas. But yeah, I mean he he went to Texas Tech and played two sports down there for a little bit, and then obviously he chose the football route. But um, yeah, it's been. It was such a blessing to have him in our community and leading the Kansas City Chiefs to multiple Super Bowls already and just another great person to be in the community. It's been awesome. Yeah, I'd almost forgotten why I was bringing that up. Okay, I was t- I'm going to tie it back now. I'm going to try to. Uh, so these are enormous facilities, indoors, obviously you got the roof overhead. Um, are they so big that they would have an indoor football field? Are they of that size or is it kind of no, – kind of you know, that when you talk about uh, that big of a facility, it's not one of the um, newer facilities in Kansas City. So you're going to have pillars and stuff like that to separate right. some things. But, okay. um, you know, the the new complex up by the, the racetrack, I think that's a pretty good suspension building that where they can run some basketball and volleyball type stuff. But, you know, we have enough space. Uh, they've already moved a couple pillars to have some soccer fields and stuff like that. Uh, uh. But, I mean, just, just a lot of you know, turf space and cage space. And we have, you know, space for our catchers, uh, space for our infielders, space for our pitchers. It's just um, a huge blessing for all of our staff and our kids to really get that opportunity for that much indoor space. Because obviously coming from a residential barn, it's it's pretty surreal coming from something that's kind of like one or two cage uh, opportunity to, okay, which cage do you want, 14 or 20? or <laughs> Yeah. Know? Um, yeah so it's, it's it's been great and, and and we can we can probably long toss inside here too instead of having Absolutely. you know what was the yeah, what was the lo- longest dimensions in your barn that you could uh oh. stretch it out 50 feet yeah, 100 we, feet yeah yeah we were probably 60 feet tops i mean and that, yeah. it was it was 
you know, maybe a little bit further because I think we did get 60 feet, six inches some in, uh, somehow, some way. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, there's some guys in here throwing long toss. Jason Adam, another maybe household name for the Tampa people. Um, um, he's, he's a Kansas City kid, went through our academy. They, they throw long toss in here all the time and the, back on the soccer fields. And, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a really, really, really awesome space to have for indoor facilities in Kansas City when we do have to hibernate. All right, so so we, we've we've kind of blown up the hibernation part of the year. We get it. Nobody's <laughs> nobody's moving to Kansas City for the uh, for, you know, for the beach weather, um, but but the weather will break. And now all of a sudden, you have this you have this resource called Creekside Baseball, and I saw I I saw that in your um, Twitter timeline there, your feed, and I clicked through, and it looks like just you know, the most magnificent brand new turf multi field. What is it about eight field facility? Yeah. So Creekside um, was, was built in Kansas city a couple of years ago. Um, and that was a great uh, thing for Kansas city because they had the turf in fields and, you know, it, it was kind of like the first complex that had the six fields that, that a lot of teams from outside of Kansas city you could come to and get some really good, good competition, but uh, home field uh, went ahead and built the eight fields. So when you think about, um those eight fields all turf even the outfields turf it's a beautiful complex it's it's done basically the city's just kind of going through it to allow us to get on there but um home field built the eight hey i fields think you're well. hang on one second jeremy i think you're covering your mic a little bit okay can you hear me better now yeah better yep keep going okay um basically home field built the eight fields uh across from creekside which is about five ten minutes down the road um, and I think that, um, you know, you might get that mixed up because Creekside was a separate entity where, where PBR basically runs these tournaments out of Kansas city at Creekside and then, uh, at home field with the new eight fields. So, so home, home fields, field, home field has their own set of eight fields and you have Creekside right down the road. Yeah. So PBR is basically going to be running, you know, 14 fields within 10 minutes of each other. Wow. Uh, you know, we, we, we really want to you know get that information out to the, to the country because, you know, that we'll, we'll be able to have some really good competition and people who care about the game and want to do it the right, right way. And, you know, PBR, um, is running those tournaments. So we want people to feel welcome to come to Kansas city and, and, um, you know, it's, it's going to be great. It's just a really, really, no pun intended home field complex you know i see it feels really it's, it's just walking through there it's really really nice um and like i said all turf even the outfield where creekside didn't have the turf in the outfield so i uh, the grading system and everything they did is pretty much a plus where where would you say okay obviously there's plenty of baseball in the kansas city metro area but when you're going to put a you're you know let's say pbr is going to put a uh an event on the calendar what is the logical geographic spots that people are coming from i just pulled up the map um what would would people from st louis drive across to play in this oh yeah absolutely okay Um, so that's to the that's to the east what about are they coming from say des moines or omaha to come south to play in kansas city yeah Okay. All Absolute, right. Absolutely. Yep. Nebraska people, um, the Arkansas Wichita, come up. Wichita people. And it, I think there's some uh, really good organizations out in Denver area that can come over. Um, you know, those are probably a driving distance type type people. I and mean, even the Minnesota guys, they seem to get down in Kansas city and Creekside the past couple of years, uh, oh, Wisconsin hitters and all those guys that maybe driving distance, maybe want to jump on a flight, but, you know, Kansas City's got a brand new uh, airport and terminals, and I think we're probably 15 minutes from the airport with no traffic. Uh, so it's a uh, pretty mind blowing, uh, a peaceful experience, I should say, compared to maybe some other places that you, <laughs> just to get out of the airport, you're looking at a, you know pretty much you know a tough situation. So no so traffic just... if they if they stay up by the Legends uh, in a hotel area which they're building hotels up there as well. I mean, you're looking at something that's going to be, you know, obviously not just good baseball and good competition, well-run events, but, you know, kind of a kind of a relaxed, peaceful, you know, maybe, you know, a lot of people, I think, 
you know, combine the family vacations with some of these events. And it's going to be really nice to be able to come to Kansas City and relax and play some baseball. So, okay, again, forgive me. I'm an East Coaster with very limited geographic knowledge of, of your part of the world. Um, but I just I just did a quick directions on Google um, from from Minneapolis, Chicago, Madison, Wisconsin, Milwaukee. All these spots are less than eight hours away. Yeah. Um, and so it can it can become a pretty good hub if if you're going to have 14 turf fields at your disposal if you're PBR and you're going to run a tournament you're going to put some powerhouse teams from everything from call it Denver to maybe Louisville and up to Chicago and up to Minneapolis you can pretty you can put some pretty good teams in that tournament and everybody ends up being basically an eight hour or less drive that's pretty good absolutely so when they designed the fields you know they really took the perspective of the player the parent um the coaches and also obviously one of the most important things people will travel and do this thing is to get exposure to these college if not professional scouts so the eight fields are these two quad complexes which you can basically kind of like uh, lake point in atlanta where you can stand in one spot and see three pitchers at the same time uh, you walk maybe five, ten feet, you can see that other field on the other side of the concession stand and the restrooms. Um, so you're going to see four fields very, very easily and kind of, you know, be able to scout these kids very easily. And then, you know, walk, I don't know, 400 feet or plus and then go to the other four fields and go watch those. So they really, really thought about the college coach and the recruiter coming in and really getting a good sense of, you know, Hey, I don't have to jump around to so many fields. I can see these eight fields very within walking distance, very conveniently. And uh, like I said, just getting in and out of the Kansas City Airport and without any traffic up down 435. It's, I mean, it's going to be really, really. People are going to be shocked how easy this is going to be. I, I listen. The last place I want to go during the summertime is Atlanta. So if given, <laughs> <laughs> it's just so it's just it's just hot. It's muggy. It's humid. It's, you know, 10 million people all trying to get to the same place that you're trying to get to. The traffic is crazy. The fields are so far apart. The idea of having four, eight, uh, 14 fields within, you know, five minutes of each other is pretty, it's, uh, it's, uh, pretty, uh, uh, enticing. Yeah. Uh, I am, um, again, again, no traffic. I mean, that's, that's, you know, you're, you're, talk about Atlanta and and Lake Point and those guys are it's such a blessing for to be able to go down to Atlanta Um, but you just don't quite know you know there's some some uncertainties with traffic and stuff like that in the airport you know not the easiest and then just Kansas City being the central location in America we should be able to have a lot of good teams and a lot of you know college coaches that can travel here pretty easily I'm um yeah no you're 100% right uh I I don't I don't see why these events don't get some powerhouse uh, organizations playing in it. Should be should be really good, man. And then, selfishly for you, the more events that are held there with powerhouse teams, the less travel you have to do. Absolutely. Yeah, I got uh, a bunch of kids at home, and then uh, <laughs> so we've we've traveled a lot of places since so seven. And uh, it'd be nice to just kind of have a hub for people to come to Kansas City and experience the city and. And, um, yeah, it's been, it's, it's definitely going to be nice. Um, so I'm on your, I'm on your, uh, your, um, uh, alumni page over on the, uh, building champions website. And I scroll down just a little bit and a name caught my eye it's a kid who looks like he graduated last year. Um, PJ Hughes. Mm-hmm. His uh, there's a kid, there's a coach named Hughes uh, at a school in your state. Any relation? Uh, yeah, he, that's his son. Uh, the, <laughs> Hughes, the, the Hughes family has been awesome, awesome to us, and and um, you know basically has, has helped us along the way. Uh, we've had PJ for a, a, a few years now, and and uh, have a great connection to those guys, and being able to send them some players. Uh, that's Nick great. Who just. Nick Edwin, who just uh, signed with the Toronto Blue Jays, 
uh, this past year. I had a really nice career out there, but the Hughes family is great. Uh, it's such a great place to go develop as a va- baseball player. But, you know, you talk about all the kids and you say, hey, how do you like it there? And they, 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 they talk about the thing I was talking about when I was at Arizona State, which is about people and about, you know, growing up as a man. And, you know, you basically go in as a kid and you hope to come out a man. And then I think that Coach Hughes and the, his staff out there at Kansas State, that's what they're all about. So, yeah, that's his son. Um, that's fantastic. I, I, so I know Pete from his, his days over here at, uh, uh, at Virginia Tech um, uh, back in the day. So that, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, and for some reason, the, 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 uh, Hughes' name jumped out at, out at me. I actually, I'm not – is wh- where did he end up going? I don't know if I. I think I recognize that logo, but I don't want to say in case I'm wrong. Air Force. That's what I thought. That's incredible. Yeah. Good for that yeah. kid. Good for great good kid. For, uh, just I mean, raised right. Obviously, coach's son uh, does all the things possible. A uh, little bit of a late bloomer, which is awesome for him because his baseball is way in front of him. Uh, his you know his best baseball is is coming, um, and so it, it's going to be a great place for him and. It's just I can't say enough great things about the the Hughes family and what they do. Awesome, that's that's very cool to hear. You know, so I you know I'm scrolling through here, and you know a lot of a lot of these logos I I recognize. You're sending you're sending guys to big schools, small schools, everywhere in between, including including my wife's alma mater, which I did not expect to see on here. Washington and Lee. It looks like you have one kid who could read and write at a very high level. Uh, <laughs> Washington and Lee, for those listening, is a um, a small private school uh, in Lexington, Virginia. It's a I, I would argue it's the hardest school in the state of Virginia to get into because um, it's elite academics, but it's also tiny. Um, so yeah, Andrew Andrew Ola, our recruiting coordinator, does a great job of kind of connecting these kids to the right fits that we try to get these kids into and. And uh, he he works a little bit with Andrew Bryan, bring Sports Force out there on the on the West Coast, and good deal. And those guys do it. Those guys do a great job of you know get, building those connections to those colleges. And yeah, we've we, I mean been been doing this since '07, so we've you know covered the, some D3s, obviously a lot of D2s in the area, at Division ones from coast to coast. So it's been it's been fun to watch you know God's plan and all these kids um, as they graduate from our program and go off. And it sounded like you mentioned having a bunch of kids at home. Was that talking about your own children? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a living Brady bunch. I came from three and married three. So we have ages anywhere from, um, you know, 16 to 21. Uh, my oldest is just graduated from basic training in the army and, uh, oh, wow. down in San Antonio being a medic, a uh, field medic down there. And, uh, one of our youngest, Mickey, he just, uh, he, he got diagnosed with leukemia back in January of last of this year. And, He's in remission. He, he did four rounds of chemo and a bone marrow transplant. So watching him battle that's been uh, inspiring to say the least. That just watching you know fifteen year old kid now he's sixteen had a birthday in September. So yeah, there's wow. a lot of things. There's a lot of a lot of activity at home too uh, that I'm responsible for. And um, but it's 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 been such a blessing to watch all these kids you know choose their own path. So you know you got the all these kids in the academy, then you got the kids at home and just trying to do the best you can as a father and a mentor and and the coach so it's been it's been fun did any of those six um play ball with you over at building champions yeah so we got luke and mickey who are in the in the system right now luke is a junior at blue valley northwest high school here in kansas city he'll be on our 17 year old team and mickey uh making it back he's in remission and he's doing a good job of of, you know getting back in shape and he's going to He's going to make it uh, back to Rockers High School and, and and play for us in the summertime. So he obviously took some time off there, to, you know, uh, basically beating cancer and and doing a good job. So, but those are the two boys. Other so four girls, and they're involved in soccer. Is uh, Isabel down in Southwest Baptist playing soccer down there in college, and and the and the rest are just in in the high school realm. So, all right, great. man. I can't imagine. We've got we've got one here, and sometimes I'm like. Things move fast with one. I can't imagine how fast things move with six. That's yeah, uh, kids, kids, kids can be uh, a lot, obviously, with everything they got going on. And but um, you know, I'm definitely not afraid of them and trying to help them out. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, I uh, I I worry about I worry about mine when 
the teenage years come, but you, you obviously embrace it. You, you're surrounded by teenagers probably all day, every day. And I'm just, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It's something that we don't master. We just kind of roll up the punches and do the best we can. But I mean, every, every kid's different and that's, that's the thing. But yeah, that's a, that's a hard subject. A lot, a lot harder than baseball and baseball is very hard. Obviously you know that, <laughs> but trying to guide the kids through the teenage process is a tough one. It's it's uh it's a it's a it's a bigger topic than uh than this podcast is ready to uh to cover. I I tell my cousin all the time. She's got she's got two teenage boys and we spent a lot of time with them this summer and I'm just like I think mine mine turns 8 um this week and I I'm like I think I'm going to send mine to boarding school because <laughs> Yeah, man, teenage boys are tough. I and, and forget it, teenage girls. I don't, I have no idea, but teenage <laughs> teenage boys. I don't even speak the same language. It sounds like they're speaking English, but I don't understand any of the words coming out of their mouth. You yeah. know. So, it's, um, it's listen, we're 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 getting close to uh uh probably the end of this conversation. But I I always like to ask a couple of. Uh, these questions, I, I think I sent you ahead of time, and um, sometimes I don't get to these, but I'm going to try to make an effort to get to at least a couple of these because I, I, sometimes I like where they take us. Um, is there a book or a movie or a website, a Twitter account, whatever, a resource that um, that you find yourself uh, recommending to people, whether it's players, parents, other coaches, um, anything like that? Man, what a great question. I, obviously, not having a household name when I first started, uh, you know, being a minor leaguer, I had to do a lot of research study. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, at that time back in the 03, 04 rings, Right View Pro was Don Slot coming out with a bunch of videos from a bunch of all star guys from different yes. angles and stuff like that. And, and I, I dove so much into the just watching the film to try to figure out what all hitters were doing film wise. You know, I wish we would have had film back in the late nineties, early two thousands, as much as, you know, you know, kids have it nowadays, as far as a turnkey situation, getting that media feedback as soon as possible. But right view pro kind of, you know, helped me out, kind of kickstart my ability to be able to see mechanics a lot and kind of do slow motion stuff with that. Can I, can I ask um, a silly sorry. question? They yeah. used to dominate the film space and they had cameras. It seemed like at every facility but now you don't hear anything about him. And now I feel I, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm friends with, uh, Ken Spangenberger out of the Philadelphia area. And, and Ken is connected with a uh, company called aware and they are putting up four, six, eight cameras on every single college baseball facility. Yeah. And I was just thinking the other day, I'm like, well, what happened to everybody's right view pros? Like, yeah. are they still around? That I couldn't tell you. You know, I did mostly research by, you know, you listen to Don Slot, and again, I, I, I'm trying to go back, you know, where did yeah. I start my research and development as a coach, you know, because you get out from playing, and you don't even really realize what you actually did as a player, you know, because the coaching wasn't as extent back then, and you, there wasn't so much, you know, so many people on social media giving their opinions or their just basic information of, hey, look at this slow motion swing, look at what this great hitter is doing, so you know, from Right View Pro, it became, I don't know what Right View Pro is doing right now to answer your question, but, you know, now it's just, you know, I, I'm not a social media guy just because I think that every hitter that I work with is different, and I want to be careful about my time with my family as well. But um, For sure. Every once in a while, I'll get on and scroll and just look at a guy, and I'll, you know, screen record a, a um, you know, a, a great hitter who's hot and or a new hitter that just came up, you know, a young hitter, then I just want to make sure that, I'm understanding what he's doing correct as far as movement process and see if it can match up one of the hitters that I work with. I think that's my research and development on the physical side of kind of mechanical side. Um, man, countless endless great mind books. Um, Harvey Dorfman was a guy that, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately passed away, but he spoke to us at Arizona state. Pat Murphy had us you know, uh, come talk to us back in the day and, he has a tremendous amount of good books, um, three or four at least, on the mental game of baseball that I've really enjoyed over the years. I know it's maybe a little bit old school, but I think they've even revised that book and, and redid it. But uh, those really helped me understand the mental side of the game and try to simplify it for the kids. Um, 
you know, movie on maybe old school to build the passion, you know, that the natural as a kid was a great, you know, Ooh. if you ask a kid what, what the movie, the natural is, they, they, they have no idea. Most <laughs> don't, but, uh, you know, if you build these passions through movies, maybe inspiration and stuff like that to go try baseball out. And, you know, of course, all the childhood memories of, of, of child, you know, baseball movies was a great thing for me, but I, I, I you know, furthering your development as a coach, you know, has a lot to do with technology nowadays. We obviously use blast motion a lot uh, just to kind of verify what we're seeing and kind of give the the player the immediate feedback and also help them understand their own swing and help them be the coach of their own swing, help them understand what metrics to look at. Uh, simplify it for them as much as possible because it can get you know, mind-numbing as far as how much stuff is out there. Uh, but uh, I don't know if I'm answering your question right, but those are kind of the tools that I've used over the years that kind of help me understand how to match up film with blast motion and stuff like that. But I would say that's where we're at mostly at this current time. But it, I've had so by much the way, I looked I looked it up. Right View Pro is now under the name V1 Sports, V1Sports.com. Okay. It looks like I don't know if they rebranded or got acquired, but if you go to RightViewPro.com, you end up at V1 Sports. So they are still kicking. Um, in in some way, shape, or form. So yeah, I've never would, met Don Slot, but I would. I mean, I give him a lot of credit for starting that system and the way he explained that um, movement process helped me become a better instructor. There's no question. But um, so that was a big deal for me. And that was again, that was 20 years ago. So, um, mm-hmm. but that's that was the information that was out at that time. You kind of had to go to those four camera view angles and. But now, you know, it's, there's so many good camera, you know, angles and different, you know, cameras that have it down the slow motion stuff that you can really see movements really well. So, yeah, let me ask you one last question. This one can go a million different directions. Um, what one change could be made to travel baseball that would have the biggest positive impact? That's a that's such a great question, and it's a, a a topic that maybe I won't hit on everything today, but just needs to continue to be looked at as we continue to navigate. You know how to you you, you got to make sure that you're building the player, the build, building the person. Um, you got to make sure you build relationships with the kids because you know I, I hope that nobody's looking past the kid themselves as we're, as we're trying to grow these kids, mature them and, and try to make them great people. Uh, I mentioned earlier the fact that I can give information to the Royals about how, what kind of people they are, how they're raised, you know, what kind of work ethic they have and stuff like that to see if we're drafting the right player or not. And I just want to make sure that we're not looking just to the showcasing, to the commitment, to the, you know, the opportunities of college or professional baseball. And then we're not looking at the organic, genuine, process of how we were raised maybe through some great uh, local coaches or high school coaches or great college coaches about building the person develop the person and a lot of this stuff will take care of itself because we all know if, if there's a division one out division one athlete out there or a professional athlete out out there you know that's god-given talent that's probably gonna you know trump every kind of system or um you know th- th- they're going to be found no matter what but we we got to make sure we're building the right person through that process because they're going to need a tool set to get through life. Um, I think, you know, King Griffey Jr. is taking photographs right now for a living. <laughs> so mm-hmm. even those types of people are, are, have moved on from playing and uh, are doing something different. And, of course, we all, they have families and kids and they're raising people. And I just don't want to get blinded by the light, so to speak, in this world of, of trying to figure out how to, you know um, – just just make sure we have an organic and genuine process to developing the person. And um, I think that's probably the biggest thing for me. Uh, d- despite if we go to Atlanta or people come to Kansas City, let's teach these, pe- teach these kids how to be great people. And then the, re- well, the rest should take care of itself because you got so many great hubs now, including the one we just talked about. I mean, we're going to put these kids out on the field as the college coaches, professional scouts. They're going to see these kids. That's going to take care of itself. And everybody's on a different path. I was a 17 year old graduate and and it's, it's all different, but I just, I just hope that all the organizations and coaches are trying to do the best to build the character of the player uh, and not Mm -hmm. just talk about the statistics or the, the exit belows or the, you know, showcase this showcase that I hope that that's not looking, that's not being passed up. 
Yeah, it's not the end all be all. It really isn't. Um, yeah, it, and if you're an organization that can that can really work on those things, I mean, it, it almost let's work on that as much as or you know, like don't omit it. I think I think so. So many people are ca- get caught up in uh, the physical mechanics of the sport that uh, some of those other things, whether it's uh, you know the persistence uh, or work ethic or being a good teammate. Yeah. Like there's so many good players out there. There's, you know, flip it around a little bit. Like I think of stories like I, I, a story comes to mind where an SEC school, like they saw this kid do a thing physically and, and that, you know, got, got them excited and they never bothered to reach out to the kid's high school coach, who's a buddy of mine. This is, you know, like I know the kid, he's a local kid and the high school coach is a good buddy of mine. Like, you know, that SEC program never bothered to reach out to him where he could have talked about all those other things that have nothing to do with physical ability. Well, yeah. long story short, it, it didn't work out. And you're yeah. like, you know, that, that, um, a little quick little five minute call can tell you, can yeah. tell you some things. Right. And, and, and to the positive as well, like you've, if you're a college coach and you got, and, and you're narrowing it, the field down between three or four or five guys for this one slot, man, make a five minute phone call and like figure out what those people in that are around that kid a lot have to say and get yeah. different perspectives. Talk, talk, talk yeah talk to the travel coach who is sort of become the point man in this but don't forget to talk to the high school coach and talk to the guy he hits with and talk to you know talk to different people um so anyway yeah that's uh that's such a good good point you've brought up here today yeah i think that's the responsibility of the coach and the mentor and the parent obviously on the developmental side the the talent's going to speak for itself it's going to be obvious um and the, the college coach to your point uh, just like the Royals organization does, is they, you know, they really dig into the player to try to figure out who they're drafting to go represent their organization and maybe their city one day in a, in a championship. So I think that they can definitely ask him some more questions. I'm getting to the point where I've seen enough stories to where I can kind of say, you know, he's he's going to probably make it really far based on his personality and character because he has a tool set that kind of that's going to make him go. But I think we've seen enough in sports – in enough sports, uh, you know, football, baseball, enough stories to where the Tom Brady's of the world or even the Patrick Mahomes who, you know, I think there was a few quarterbacks drafted in front of him uh, in, the, in his draft. Like, it's not just physical tools that you're drafting. It's it's somehow the if factor that they can go figure out their situations once they get to that next level and get better and continue to get better. So that has a lot to do with how you're raised, how you perceive things, and how you kind of work with people in general. I've had a long conversation um just this past Saturday with a kid that's going off to college and we weren't talking about baseball movements at all. We were sitting in a chair and at a table with his dad and I kept talking to him about, you know, how to, how to be a great community guy, how to, how to now take your talents as a senior and and work with the younger kids and give back your, give back to your city, give back to your academy, work with those younger guys. We're not talking about movements. He's already got movements. He's already got athletic ability. So that's that. That would be the thing, I guess. I just want to make sure people are aware of that because I think everybody chases the the obvious lights of that. When when you have when you have your kids for eight weeks in the summertime, you know those post game speeches or those practice speeches that kind of go in one ear out the other. You, you somehow realize what coach was talking about, maybe down the road in life, and it really helps them out. So you're not just building, hopefully, the Division One or any college player or professional player. Hopefully, you know, getting some information to them that they can help them out with life in general. Yeah, well put, man. Well put. Let's um, let's uh, let's give you one last second here. If you have any parting words for any parents, players, coaches who still might be listening, um, and then we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll end this portion of the call. Um, you know, just kind of, the, the, I guess, January 27th, um, you know, my life got uh, flipped upside down when my son got diagnosed with uh, leukemia, rare form, and 
and you, you kind of just go through life and you're, you're, you're chasing these things and you're doing these things. And I think that, you know, was a huge blessing to me and our family and even to Mickey to, to, to be able to understand what God's plan for each individual kid in your family is, or maybe your situ- situation. So, um, you know, I'm a believer in, in Jesus Christ and in reading the Bible before this happened. And even more so now, I guess to just, uh, trust God in your, in all your situations and trust, trust the organic and genuine process of, uh, you know, of your kids and don't try not to compare your kids to anybody else's because, uh, there's so many stories out there of, of late bloomers and just focus on the things that matter in your family and, and make sure that you're not looking and get blinded by, you know, the, the failure of the game, enjoy every process because I would have been, I would have loved to have been on the field with my son this past summer. And unfortunately we were at children's mercy downtown pretty consistently with chemotherapy and, and a bone marrow transplant. So uh, maybe if that story could put things in perspective to people and help people understand that life is precious and, you know, Make sure you're not getting blinded out there and getting deception. Uh, you know, stay in the Word, read the Bible consistently, and and continue to have faith that God has a plan for your child, and 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 try to enjoy the process because it, it it goes by really fast. I mean, I remember my kids were playing nine new baseball first year kick pitch, what seems like yesterday, and now, mm-hmm. you know, we're talking about Luke, where you going to college, you know, type stuff. So just enjoy that process and and uh, thank the Lord for everything, including what seems like you know hard times. Wow. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, don't hang up. We're going to end this recording, but don't hang up. Appreciate you doing this with me. You bet.